one of the uh, one of the major issues it seems in the um, in the county in the last couple of years has been the fairgrounds in the Jackson County Fair. Um, of course, there's been all kinds of suggestions of what people should do, or what the, what the county and what the commissioners should do. In your opinion, is there a problem? And if there is, what would you intend to do about it? Well, I think there has been a problem um, that was indicated uh, with the, the fact that we recently, the commissioners, had to uh, excuse a couple hundred thousand dollars of debt that the, that the Expo and the Fairgrounds have, uh, had run up. So obviously there's a problem there. And I, and I believe that there's uh, been some changes in management that are going to uh, help with the situation. Uh, I think it's, there were, there were some issues with, as far as managing events and, and entertainment, as opposed to the facility, I think those have been uh, they've, they've given those responsibilities to different entities that are better equipped to handle those uh, those types of things. I think that will help. Uh, I think there's just been a whole lot more awareness of what the issues were, and I think they're being addressed. Uh, I don't believe that the county should support, uh, and I think that was made fairly clear, uh, that the fairgrounds need to fair needs to support itself and needs to not rely on county money um, in the future. I think we have many services that we need to make sure are continued uh, to be funded uh, and, the, and the fair has the opportunity and should actually support itself and I believe we're on the right track there. Mr. Marlowe, same question. Same question. You have to understand that government organizations that are never effective or efficient. Their only product is people. People being people, they're not widgets. And no one is perfect. Do I feel that the county should support the fairgrounds? Of course. They are a great publicity organization to the world, representing this county. It brings in a lot of money to restaurants, hotels. It provides entertainment. I mean, there's no end to what the fairgrounds provide. And for someone to say, well, you know, they could be a little more efficient. Well, Joe spent a few bucks here wrong. Of course, it always happens in government. I hope you're not shocked that this does occur. But I feel that the county has an obligation to support that organization, yes. Whereas that organization supports the county. It supports you as an individual. Your children, your families, uh, it supports everything. So, yes, I think the county should support that. And I'm not going to stand there and nitpick every dollar that they ever spent or criticize individuals. You know, if it gets grossly out of hand, it will be evident and changes can be made. But until that time, you have to quit this little bickering, this biting at each other's heels. And you just have to get the job done, that's all. I'm finished. Mr. Kunze? Yes. Uh, the Expo and the Fairgrounds are one of our enterprise departments. Uh, it's uh, mandated to earn its way without additional help from the county, which the county has been having to do to provide income uh, subordination from our general fund. Uh, the, the board has recently been uh, changed, and along with that change, there will come new change for the Expo. And the Expo will be one of our shining pieces here that bring culture and people together, and that's what it's been doing for years historically through uh, farm and agriculture and a, and a number of our programs out there including some of our new rodeo uh, uh, events that we brought to the area but most importantly about the expo is that there is a large area out there land wise that uh, with some mitigation of some wetlands issues and also some uh, likely rezoning that that is necessary it offers up an opportunity for a much larger expansion and the ability to earn more capital uh, than it currently does now with the new board, I would say that we have a great, insightful uh, group that's been brought together. I think uh, the, the, the folks that were uh, previously on the board bring a lot of uh, enlightenment to the, to the new board relative to the um, programs that we've had in the past, which we will continue. And I'm happy to say that I think we're going to continue with our Sunday uh, fair day as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to that, and it brings a more localized uh, farming and ranching community, and I hope for agriculture as well that will be included in that as well. 
So it's a tremendous asset to the county. It's going to improve. I'm uh, very much a proponent of the fair and the fairgrounds and expo, and I intend for it to be a shining star as one of our uh, legs on the stool of prosperity. Ms. Roberts? Well, <clears throat> the fair in the expo grounds, can you think of one building or piece of parcel that the county bought? It was all donated. And that is our fairgrounds. It belongs to the people and for the, for the commissioners not to embrace that and support it in every way possible is a crying shame. And uh, the fair board has picked up their, their uh, shoes laces and uh, tightened them up. They've uh, erased sort of, through the books their debt with the county and a promise to raise their own support and uh, partnerships to make it go. They've done many corrective things, although I've seen in uh, the 2014 new county budget, their budget is still on the records at 1.5 million. So I think they are still um, supported by our, our county financially, perhaps. I will see where those those monies are trickling in from. But I, I like the changes they made. They made the Harvest Fair free admission. And, and that is a good thing for the people. We should be able to go afford to go to a fair, a county fair. It is for our kids and I I, when I see it being threatened or cut, why? Because it's not a graffiti removal program. It is a positive thing for our county, for our kids, for the people, and it's our, it's our fairgrounds. It belongs to the people. Thank you. Uh, incidentally, the reason that I placed the candidates in the order, uh, Mr. Dyer and Marlowe are running for position one, and Mr. Okunze and uh, Colleen Roberts are running for position three. And here again, we just place them in alphabetical order and so as not to discriminate in any way against them. Okay, I'm going to start this next question with Mr. Marlowe. Okay, um, severe drought may become a problem in Southern Oregon this year. Already California is feeling the pinch for lack of agricultural water. We may be in the same situation as spring rains do, do not replenish our water supply. What would you, as a commissioner, do to help both urban and agricultural users to get through this difficult year? Since I'm not God, I can't uh, do a rain dance and hit rain tomorrow. What we have here is collectively an issue in which we've been a little negligent with long, well, let's say short-term planning and long-term planning. The two items that are the most important to the to Jackson County is one cheap energy, on the other one is water. Um, the cheap energy is a little more feasible because it can be corrected politically. The long-term water issue can be also solved politically, but you're going to have to use, use a little imagination. With an engineering background and a business background, you have to understand that engineers and, and business people give an opportunity and resources turn dreams into reality. The fact is, they discovered about 40 years ago that the ideal fusion fuel was helium-3. You, uh, you, you get more energy out of the system than you put into it to maintain control, and all the ingredients are non-toxic. Okay, my vision is to see in long term is that we revitalize the space program because helium-3 was found in large quantities on the moon. And it may surprise you, but we dismantled the space program about the same time. It was estimated using the 30-year-old space shuttle system that at a cost of $1 billion per flight, the amount of ore brought back would be phenomenally profitable. But at that time, politically, you saw the system dismantled. If we were to long-term planning, were to bring, say, a fusion reactor to Jackson County, it would provide just unlimited opportunity for employment. The energy produced could be used to pump water from the coast because, let's face it, the climate change is semi-permanent. We're not going to go back. You may have short periods in which you have more rain than other, but due to the population shift, due to that history repeats itself, you're going to have to make other adaptations. So in the long term, 
Let's look at and dream about the fusion plant. It's non-toxic. Uh, and you bring the seawater over and you desalinate it. And then you sell the byproducts from it. And then you apply the water to the agriculture. But there's no long-term planning in Oregon. And I hell, there's probably, there's very little short-term planning. It's just every day, business as usual. So what I'm doing here, I'm bringing a different dimension and want to answer the question. Because I can't do anything tomorrow, and no one realistically is. And I'm out of time. I didn't, I didn't realize that time on it was on this answer, but okay. Next. Mr. Kunze, same yes. question. Yes. Back in the mid-80s, 1980, uh, 486 area, I supplied half of all of the equipment to construct the Elk Creek Dam. Had we had that dam now, we wouldn't be facing the shortage potentials that we, we are because we have had more water retention, I think. So unfortunately, um, that, that job was stopped halfway through. We had to pay off the contractor in entirety. And then we also had to tear down the, the, the balance of the dam and notch it so um, uh, fish could travel uh, through it. Uh, which I think would have been provided for had the dam uh, been fully intact anyway. But um, to, to replace that dam and, and put it back together now would cost about five times what it was going to cost us before, and it's unfortunate that we don't have that retention. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, we have uh, water districts in our area. We've got the Medford Irrigation District, the Talon Irrigation District, the Eagle, Eagle Point Ir Irrigation District, and also the Rogue Valley Irrigation Districts. I will be working with those folks uh, to help coordinate the release of waters, and there are rights uh, also off of our surface uh, streams and rivers as well. Those are always first in time and, and first in use rights. So um, the other component of that is working with the Bureau of Reclamation on their uh, releases of water into the system and making sure that they don't um, release more water when we have the likelihood for for the need, but also at the same time keep the turbidity and the river flow uh, um, temperatures in order to keep the fish habitat in, in, in uh, place. So it's uh, like a lot of things, it's a complex issue. It requires various aspects from various entities. I'm pretty familiar with all of that and I'll intend to work with them. Ms. Roberts? Well, coordination is a, is a valuable asset the commissioners have. Um, it is with the irrigation districts as it is with maybe the Klamath uh, water projects over there. They still have their dams. We blew ours up. We not only didn't build them, we destroyed the one we had. And I, I would not go for that. And I wouldn't be imprisoning citizens who dared store rainwater on their property as well. And while Gary Harrington was in jail, our commissioners gave Oregon Water Resources Department office space. I wouldn't do that either. We need to stand for our citizens. Our ponds are valuable. I live in the country. We all have them up there for fire safety. <laughs> and it does keep the water tables uh, at higher levels, but when we drain them all, we're just throwing it down to the ocean. We're not storing it anywhere. And there's one other project I have red flags all over, and that's the WISE project. It stands for Water Irrigation uh, Streams for Our Economy, and it's not WISE. It is a $450 billion project to encapsulate our water. and. From what I see, it's going to be the um, mantra of, of conserving water and, and low water tables. We need to have this in here. It's the last thing we need. It'll, I feel it's the open door to having our wells um, monitored and paid, you know, have to pay to use them and many other water control issues in our state. And um, it's definitely a project. Our, we, our, your money goes to them about 5000 two years for $10,000 for this project to, to get it initiated. And it's been in the works for over 10 years. And fortunately, it has not gained a whole lot of momentum because um, I think it, it will be a federal ownership of our water. And we need to have very conservative, watchful eyes on this project that it doesn't gain a bit greater foothold in our county. Mr. Dyer, same question. Well, again, uh, short of being able to make it rain more, I think uh, the main thing that we need to do is be proactive and work within the various irrigation districts and make sure there is a, a, a coordinated plan implemented to whether it's uh, conservation, uh, but just a, a coordinated plan where they all get together, 
cooperate, make sure that there's enough water, that there isn't significant damage um, to, the, to the local agriculture. Obviously, that's first and foremost uh, the concern. Um, and, and short of that, uh, we, again, um, hope for more, uh, for, for more rain. I know that's not a solution, obviously, but again, to, to coordinate a good effort amongst all the, the agencies involved uh, to ensure the very least damage we possibly can. I know there's also some emergency funds as far as um, from the state that we are going to be able to utilize and to coordinate an effort using that to, again, mitigate the damage to the very minimum. I think that's all we can do. Okay, we're going to start with Mr. Okunzi this time. Uh, budget is always in, always in the news, of course. Um, it seems to be one of the most frequently discussed topics throughout the county. Uh, are we in the middle of a fiscal crisis? And if so, what solutions would you offer as commissioner to help our deficit? We are in the middle of a crisis because we lost the uh, ONC land funds, the Oregon and California Railroad uh, timber properties that were designated to provide income for rural schools. And uh, we've lost approximately $25 million in current dollars uh, from uh, the lack of, of uh, timber harvesting. And there's no question that we are sitting in, on a gold mine of timber that is a renewable resource and that with proper forest management, uh, I would hope that we'll be able to get back in and do some more selective uh, harvesting of uh, timber and bring some more economy back uh, directly to the county coffers from those receipts so that we can get that money back out. Um, we're going to have about a $306 million budget this year, which is about $3 million higher than we were last year. Good news is that we're only going to be uh, subordinating that budget by about $5 million out of our quote-unquote rainy day funds as opposed to $7 million uh, in the last uh, fiscal cycle. Um, we have reserves on hand that we call carryovers that are in place as well, so we're actually in pretty good shape, and by and large, our previous boards and our county uh, administrator have done, I think, a very admirable job, especially by comparison to the rest of the state, to keep Jackson County in, uh, in a posture to, uh, to take care of ourselves during this uh, crisis of, of revenues. Uh, as far as new revenues go, in addition to those timber dollars, I'm uh, involved in a mastermind management program that is to uh, try to develop new high-tech industry. Now, it's surprising to say that if I asked you how many high-tech firms there are in, the, are in this county, I bet you I'd be surprised to hear what the answer is, but there are 277 current operating high-tech firms in Jackson County, from one individual to a number of individuals. We have an opportunity to really work that base up and provide good, clean air, high-tech uh, revenue opportunities through our enterprise zones that I have been a proponent of. I'm glad to see that the, the current board had approved that uh, enterprise areas, uh, which will provide for uh, re um, uh, a reduction of uh, taxes, actually a, a, the ability to hold off on taxes, I think, for three years and possibly five years. It also includes an overlay for e-commerce as well. So uh, the ability to, to uh, bring in more income will come from private enterprise primarily and making this an area that will encourage businesses to grow and businesses to come into the area. And enterprise zones is one of those areas as well. We also have a very burgeoning capability with recreation in addition to the uh, expo that I mentioned earlier. Recreational opportunities are tremendous. I want to see recreational manufacturing companies come to the area. We need to be promoting that, and by developing our expo, I think it'll help bring those types of companies in here to provide recreational uh, manufacturing opportunities to the area. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Roberts? Well, it, the economic development is um, accomplished several ways. One, by getting our natural resources open. A judge last summer um, ordered BLM to increase timber harvest and uh, bring those levels up to uh, sustainable uh, growth levels. And it, as far as I know it, that hasn't been done. And I feel like our commissioners should have been at that bargaining table um, with coordination power to see that get started. But here we are approaching another fire season to see our economic wealth burn up and breathe smoke. And that is uh, not great management of our wealth of 
of our natural resources in our, in our woods. The other um, area that I believe, besides enterprise zones, I think it's a perfect example, government just needs to get out of the way. I think we have far too many restrictions. If any of you have tried to build a business or um, add a porch to your home, you realize the cumbersome county requirements that are there in place that make it too expensive and uh, quite complicated. In fact, I have a 24 page, the building permit, there's 24 pages of, of new and increased fees at a, about an average rate of 12% from last year. I think we should diminish those, maybe diminish some of the restrictions, but why increase the fees 12%? Whose wages has kept up with that? And system development charges went up 10% across the board. Why? When we, we had property in Eagle Point, we were going to build our bakery about 10 years ago. And before we could even break ground back then, it was going to be $60,000. I don't know how many donuts you have to sell to cover that, but we couldn't do it. And I just think we have to look at those things. Those are the things that will increase business and economic development in our county. And our commissioners sometimes have decided to let government create more jobs and give so ready some money so they can um, attract new business in. Well, why don't we give that money to our fee schedule and let it benefit everybody? Why pick and choose a few? I agree. And I just think we need a commissioner also that's willing to dig in and look at the budget. For instance, Last December, our commissioners approved a 34,000 um, contract to remodel the elections lobby. When the supplemental budget came in, it came in at 45,000. My question is, where is our other $11,000? They don't, they don't have an answer for me. It's in other fees, Colleen. It's complicated. They don't know, they don't give me an answer. I will have those answers for you. I will watch over every penny. I think zero based budgeting and financial management is necessary so your money is accounted for and that's just a tip of the iceberg. I plan to get in there and know where the extra money has gone and be a good steward of your funds. Mr. Dyer, do we have a problem and what's your solution? Oh, I believe there's a problem, of course. Uh, the solution is never going to be uh, to raise taxes. People are taxed to the breaking point already and that will not be the solution. I think the solution, there's, there's a lot of areas, of course, that can be improved upon, that can help the situation. Uh, some of the programs, the creative initiative programs, um, such as when we built or modeled the jail and now we're renting jail beds. Um, I think that's a, a program that, that helps uh, the, the general fund especially as it was built with general fund dollars and those revenues go to the general fund, which is obviously the, uh, the area that we can most control and utilize to, to the purposes that we feel are important. Um, I believe, again, just just efficiency and making sure we're looking at every single program and every uh, branch and entity, uh, every expenditure, and making sure that it is it's necessary and it's effective and it's affordable. Uh, and that that needs to be done consistently and constantly. Um, I also think, as far as economic development, we as a region. Uh, can do better by a more coordinated and cooperative effort. I think there's a little bit, sometimes there's turf war, sometimes it's just uh, personalities, but if, if the entire region were to be more as one uh, coordinated unit as far as the message that we give to businesses that, that we want to locate here, invest here, and hire here, uh, and for people to come here to visit, I think there's opportunities there that are missed, um, like I say, because there's infighting. Um, but again, I don't think, you know, my solution would never be uh, to raise taxes. I think that's counterproductive. Uh, also, you know, Joel mentioned this, and this of course, I think, I don't know anybody, a reasonable person who doesn't agree that we should be back on these public lands with a reasonable timber harvest. It's going to, of course, increase the revenues to this county, to the surrounding counties, which the surrounding counties' uh, financial issues affect us as well. Um, as, as the sheriff's candidates, I'm sure, are well aware, as most everyone is well aware. Um, 
but as far as the, the, the jobs that it creates, of course, those are going to be taxpayers as well. Uh, there is there's a lot of areas that can be improved upon, and if we, again, don't focus on one area, but, but look at all of them and work diligently on every one of those areas, I think we are... We are in decent shape now as compared to the counties around us. We can continue to be in decent financial shape. I think the, the commissioners have actually done a, a good job keeping us in, in the position we're in. And I think the new commissioners going in need to continue that work and actually expand upon it. Mr. Marlowe, what's your opinion? My opinion. You know, every day we're inundated with very sophisticated arguments that have just enough truth they sound plausible, and enough error in them that they're a tragedy, they're a disaster. We talk about the timbering. Okay, the last time timbering was at its pinnacle, where were the logs going? More often than not, they were being shipped to China. You can't ship, of course, unprocessed logs, so you just make a single cut in it, now it's processed and the thing is shipped overseas. If you're going to re-establish logging, then you have to insist that the uh, logs being milled here in Jackson County, you know, turned into lumber, turned into plywood, turned into furniture, turned into whatever. But if you're going to attract industry, you got to have cheap industry. I mean, you got to have cheap energy. Cheap energy right now is artificially high, so you have to address that problem. In the last six years, 80,000 manufacturing facilities in the United States have closed, so who are you going to attract? If there's no cheap energy and there's no water, they're not coming. You know, you can define your terms, anything. I, I once had a philosophy for a professor. Whoop. And he goes, Mr. Marlowe, this is an old shoe. Is that a true statement? I said, no, sir, it's a ballpoint pen. He says, Mr. Marlowe, look at this one more time. This is an old shoe. Now I'm going to ask you one more time. Is that a true statement? I'm 20 years old. I'm, I'm missing a fine point here. I, I know. He says, Mr. Marlowe, I just defined this object before you. Therefore, that is a true statement. However, a ballpoint pen by any other name is still a ballpoint pen, which is the truth. A true statement and the truth are not necessarily one and the same thing. They can be. So when we sit down and we start discussing things that we're going to do, you've got to wade through the illusion. If you're going to timber, okay. You're going to process those things here. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. And you're not going to process them if you don't have cheap energy. You know? So, uh, it's a big bag of worms. You've got, to, you've got to wade through all of the illusions, and that's a difficult thing. When I was at the University of Texas, they told me, Mr. Morrow, we're, we're quite certain you'll be able to uh, meet the academic challenge, but we're not sure you'll meet the challenge of life, because you see, we teach life at this university. Some of your professors are going to be just lying to you. We already know that. We approve, because life is unfair. Some of your professors will be grossly unfair to you and not to the student next to you. But life is unfair. So face up to that. And that's what we have to face up to also. Life is not fair. We're going to have to address some very tough issues. And you're going to have to look out of the box to find the answers. It's not going to be easy. I'm out of time. Okay, last question. Uh, one of the more important things that folks want to know is not what you've done in the past. Okay. But what you're going to do for the citizens of Jackson County when you're elected? We'll start with Ms. Roberts. Briefly give, briefly give us, for instance, three, three of the top things that you're going to do. I want to reinstill a valuable document called the Constitution in all decisions, in all policies. Um, I will gauge every um, input I have in, in your county business against the Constitution. We have an Oregon State and federal constitution right in this blue book. I'm learning it, I will apply it in every way, shape, and form. And I will I will just be a good steward of your money. I will question when things, it's a big deal, deal to me, and I think the budget is a high concern. I think commissioners need to know where the money's coming from, and why, where it's going to, how much, and balance it. I think it's a, it's a definite uh, financial statement. I have a master's degree in business, I balanced budgets, I've created budgets, and uh, I would be a pleasure and an honor to take care of your money, your county business, and be there for you. It will be an open door, and I hope you will go with me. 
Mr. Dyer, what are the three top items on your agenda? Well, one of them uh, we've already discussed, and I think it's top of mind with a lot of us is, is again, getting back uh, to be able to utilize our resources on our public lands. Um, and we discussed all the reasons, of course, there's, there's a myriad of them. Um, the, the forests we're talking about are in a state of neglect, causing additional, uh, the, the per acreage uh, fires that are burning and the frequency of them are going up incrementally. We need to stop that. Uh, and well, of course, we need to get back in there to generate the revenue um, and to put people back to work. The other thing that I uh, am very passionate about are our most vulnerable, our, our kids, especially. I've been a youth coach. I volunteered in the schools and in the classrooms. Um, and I want to I want to give them a purpose and a direction and get them with, with a team before they're ever involved in, in a gang wants them to become part of their team. Um, I think there's a lot of good ways to do that, uh, but I think a lot of them are falling through the cracks. Uh, one of that is, of course, parental involvement, I think, uh, has a big effect with the lack of parental involvement on when kids do end up in the wrong places. I think we need to continue with the programs that do allow uh, a constructive outlet. And I tend to work closely with the agencies uh, that are doing just that. Um, of course, I'm going to be an advocate for business. I think our, our business, of course, drives this economy. Uh, and too often, there are burdensome regulations that, that, that threaten the very existence of these businesses. I think we need to look at these and, and constantly evaluate are they necessary? And if they're not, we need to get rid of uh, the, the unnecessary and burdensome barriers that we put on business. Um, I've been in business. I know firsthand the frustrations that these can cause. Uh, and of course, I am also fiscally conservative, uh, and I've used, I've had to put that into into place and in my own business. Uh, to, just to stay afloat. I've been a general contractor the last six years. Not the best time in the world to be a general contractor, but I've made it because of good financial and fiscally sound decisions. Um, and that's what I intend to do at the county as well. Uh, every, every decision needs to be looked at extremely closely and scrutinized every possible detail to make sure that it's the right decision for Jackson County and that we are being good stewards of the public funds. I intend to do that as tax County Commissioner. Mr. Marlowe, how do you respond to that question? You know, exactly what I can do for the citizens of Jackson County. One thing that you can destroy a nation, you can destroy a community, is when it loses its identity. What I would like to do is restore that identity. While we're talking about, like in this country, you no longer participate with fireworks and all. You go to watch fireworks shows. We lost some identity there. You know, you go to school. You're no longer taught the uh, rules of life. You're, you're more or less uh, given some program in which uh, you're told that you'll be taken care of. What I tend to do is try and restore the American dream to the youth here. I lived it. I lived the American dream. One corporation, two businesses, high school teacher, junior college teacher. You know, I did all this without, I never completed my degree. I've been in school my whole life. You take psychology, anthropology, astronomy, you just, there's no end to it. And once you quit going for the paper, knowledge becomes exciting. It, it's you, you pursue it to no end. I intend to be an advocate for I guess that's the new dimension to the government that I wish to bring, is advocacy. When we're talking health, in which uh, you're bringing up to people that, you know, uh, all of these food additives. What I would like to do is challenge the community to essentially write an essay. Nutritional marketing targeting children. And I think when you finish, you'll even change your own lifestyle. So we're talking about, I'd like to bring a dimension of education to the community. You become kind of like a conscience. In other words, these jobs as commissioners, they establish the, um, 
the philosophical direction the county wants to go. We do not crunch the numbers on a daily basis. That's what you have analysts for. That's what you have other people for. You determine, you make decisions. In other words, we have a million dollars for a new phone system that's compatible with smartphones, but we don't have enough money for the libraries. You know, there's something wrong with that. One is fashionable technology that is, uh, it's obsolete in two years. You know, 24 months makes it sound a little closer. How about a little over 700 days? Sounds, sounds like tomorrow. So I intend to bring a different dimension. One is an education, one is uh, an advocacy of health, um, and to restore identity. Identity with the family, with the community, with the country. And I'm out of time again there. I thank you for listening. Mr. Okazi? You know, we live in a tremendous area. Um, we're attractive to folks from out of the area, and we're going to have a continue, continued influx of in-migration, even at 1%. It's estimated that our population is going to double in the next 50 to 100 years. I'm going to continue to do what I have been doing over the past nine years, and by my calculation, somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000 hours of community service time at no cost to the taxpayers as a planning commissioner reviewing applications and help determining what the comprehensive plan needs to call for as well as our current land development ordinances in order to have more autonomy and more ability under a very restrictive overreaching state uh, land use uh, uh, planning goals to help provide for better access to the areas that do have competing interests but to help uh, provide those areas for the kind of growth and accommodation of business and lifestyle in varied aspects that many of our uh, citizens want. And uh, one of those things, as I mentioned earlier, will be to perfect those enterprise zones and provide incentives for, for folks to come in here and stay and build businesses that provide good family wage jobs. We need jobs in the area of 56,000 average wage Jeff, a year average wage jobs, not 36,000. We need to be able to retain our younger people in this area so that we don't have this influx of retirees and then service-oriented jobs to, to accommodate their, uh, their daily needs. We have a tremendous health care uh, facility in this area, and it's a regionally expanding uh, opportunity for growth as well. So what I intend to do is to provide for more economic growth with my experience in land use and understanding how we can avoid the appeal process more, more uh, readily because we are in the most appellant state, uh, county in the state. And the better we accommodate the growth, the more likelihood we will have for not having these appeals and frivolous lawsuits that hold opportunity back. I'm also very concerned about our safety and well-being, and I plan to be a strong proponent for good management of our, uh, of our uh, Sheriff's Department and also uh, our retention of uh, uh, the recidivism rates to bring them down making sure that we live in an environment that drugs don't overtake our younger kids. And that is another reason why I might say that this library measure could be very valuable because it will give kids positive things to do in the outlying areas as opposed to having idle hands and, uh, and uh, you know where that goes. So, as I say, we have a tremendous uh, community here. We have a number of different aspects to create opportunity and growth and prosperity. I will intend to work for, for those things for the benefit of the, the citizens of this community. Well, that's right on time. How about that? For this next segment, I'm not going to lead you anywhere. I'm just going to let you make a statement for four minutes each. And we'll start with Mr. Dyer and go right on through, okay? You have four minutes. I've, uh, I've grown up here in the valley. Um, I have a passion for the valley. Uh, my son goes to public school here. I own a business here. Uh, I am deeply invested in the valley. Um, I'm passionate about using the skills. I, I, I didn't touch on it, but um, I've been pretty busy in my day-to-day -day activities running my business, uh, being with my family. So as far as County uh, issues, I haven't been immersed in them as much as maybe some of our other candidates, but I can tell you this, I'm an information sponge. I actually uh, went to law school, 
got my JD and passed the California bar exam in my spare time because I do absorb information. I'm able to, to, to take complex ideas and boil them down to make good decisions. Uh, that's something that I intend to bring to this position. I think it's an important skill to have. And I have a, very, a certain set of values and principles that I think are pretty reliable. Uh, I think they probably mirror a lot of the same values uh, of most people in this room. And no matter what the issue is, those values, values and principles won't be compromised. Um, and I'm a big advocate for, like I say, the, the most vulnerable in this county and, and the entire population for that matter. Um, and again, looking at every single decision uh, with, with the utmost scrutiny and making sure it's the best decision for each and every person in this county is what I intend to do. And I know you can't make everybody happy with every decision that you make, but I can assure you, uh, like I say, they will be made with the same values and integrity that I think most of us in this room would share. And again, that is what I would intend to do as your commissioner. Mr. Marlowe? Okay. I think uh, perhaps I should just base on some of the things that I believe in and what I will be addressing. One is I'm pro-life, okay? I've shed too many tears over too many people, young and old, that I don't even know. I retired out of the third largest public health hospital in the state of California. I spent too many times down between pathology and the morgue, beating on the walls, they scream, life is not fair, you shed your tears, you regain your composure, and you go back out and you meet the world again. So I'm definitely pro-life. I'm pro-education. I taught junior college, I taught high school. I have lifetime teaching credentials that issued by UC Berkeley that for the most part they're not honored any longer. And I taught, and I did not have a degree. You just have to be very, very good at what you do. And this will be instilled into the young people in the county. Um, I'm a children's advocate. I am not a Head Start advocate. Head Start is a government's job program. And let me explain real fast about a children's advocate. In the hospital, we had a little lady born. I'll call her Baby Jane. She was born with the intestines on the outside of her body. She was so deformed. Her mother was a drug addict. Her mother cared nothing about the baby, absolutely no remorse. The child lived to be 11 months. She was never going to leave the hospital alive. She lived 11 months. And I give credit to the judge. He didn't send her to jail. She had to come to the hospital every day and hold that baby until she passed away. We had a program there called Mother's Milk. Mother's Milk is a program. There are children born every year that cannot assimilate synthetic nutrients. They have to have the enzymes that are in the milk. They're born to mothers that don't produce enough. So lactating mothers would come into the hospital and donate their milk. It had to be processed, it had to be stored, and it was shipped around the world. In comes the po politics. Oh, gee, what's this man doing in this women's program? Well, he's one of the most renowned researchers in, with this problem. Get rid of him, fire him, a woman needs to be there. And what's this? The staff doesn't have individual computers. They don't have the Herman Miller modular furniture. Buy that. So this group goes to the Board of Supervisors, the Board of Commissioners there, and complains. So the lady running Mother's Milk is terminated. The new director comes in, cancels the money for the new Sub-Zero freezers, fires the researcher, replaces him with someone that is less qualified, buys the Herman Miller, and my God, fashionable technology and all just took the place. Some child isn't going to make it in the world because of frickin' politics. So I'm a children's advocate. Hardcore. The library initiative. We got a million dollars to spend on fashionable technology. We just bought a new million dollar phone system that we really don't know what the end cost is. We don't know what the final licensing fees will be for software, hardware, education, the decommissioning of the existing system. We don't know. But we don't have money for the libraries. I am an advocate of the libraries. 
By the time I graduated from high school, I had read every book in, in the science and industry section of that library because I needed it to complete my dreams. I'm pro-library. I'm not pro-tax because just a small increment means there's going to be a foreclosure. And the libraries are not worth a single person losing their home over. Now, I don't expect you to believe anything that I tell you. As I used to teach, you don't believe, I would like for you to prove me wrong. There will not be one suicide. There will not be one foreclosure. You can't do that. So, while I'm pro-library, I will always support the libraries. And I'm out of time, but I think the county has the resources to take care of that issue. Thank you. Mr. Kunze? My wife and I moved to this area in 1980, so we've been here for 34 years. Our three children were born here. They were all raised here. Uh, we chose to put them through Grace Christian and Cascade Christian schools. We, at the same time, um, supported the public schools as well through our tax dollars, and happily so. We'd certainly like to see public schools uh, improve. Uh, I know it's a big issue in our area, and we're very much proponents of that. Um, I've been in private enterprise, private sector for 40 years of my life. I was a former Western Division president for a large organization. I had the 14 Western states in British Columbia. I've done numerous multinational, multi-party, and multi-million dollar transactions. The county operations are a complex entity. There are 19 departments. It's got a $306 million budget in this fiscal cycle. There are nearly 900 employees. There are various assets. Uh, and the management of those assets is of key importance and the, the allocation of the funds for those assets is also of key importance. I have created budgets uh, for the, the companies that I've worked for uh, throughout the entire course of my business career. The past uh, nine years I've been a real estate broker specializing rural farm and ranch and commercial properties in Jackson County. And along with that, I have had nine years of volunteer time, as I mentioned earlier, again, estimating about 4,000 plus hours at no cost to the taxpayer, working diligently as a protector of your private property rights. I have spent many hours going over applications or recommendations by the planning department and making sure that there were no agenda-driven uh, misinterpretations of what the original intents are. As I said, we have an overarching uh, land use policy in Oregon that is the most restrictive, I think, in the United States, and it came in with Senate Bill 100 in 1974. I got involved as a volunteer on the Committee for Citizens Involvement nine years ago and subsequently appointed to the Jackson County Planning Commissions by two separate boards because of the diligence that I used in making determinations and recommendations for the boards to make sure that we weren't uh, overreaching what the, what the state requires. And in fact, in 2010, we reviewed our land use ordinances to make sure that this county will not be more restrictive, even though we can be, but not be more restrictive than what the state requires. And again, with the interest of private property rights and to avoid unnecessary appeals and frivolous lawsuits. Um, uh, I, I intend to instill effective land use. I am also on the uh, the Governor's uh, Executive Order 1207, which we call the Southern Oregon Regional uh, Pilot Plan, that is to provide additional autonomy for us, and we're going through the process now uh, to make sure that we can have the opportunity to make different uh, zonings on uh, zones that we currently have that were miszoned years ago in the late 70s and early 80s, and uh, give opportunities for asset creation of, of value for a lot of the, you folks that have properties out there that are basically useless because you don't have either the soils or the water allowances to actually be an exclusive farm use or, a, or an agricultural type property or maybe produce commercial timber on it, but it got miszoned. So I'm working on that as well, again, as a volunteer at no cost to the, to the uh, county taxpayers. And I hope to be uh, successful that with that. We're going to have another meeting on that on the 7th, in fact. So I've been very community minded. We have a great place to live. We have a lot of wonderful people around here doing various things, and I think that are also community minded and pulling together as a community, especially during hard times, because we are facing some crisis uh, because of loss of revenue. And we need everybody to work together going forward, and I intend to work with you. Ms. Roberts? 
Well, first of all, I just want to thank you all for coming. Um, I appreciate your interest in government and what us candidates have to say. And uh, I kind of wanted to make mention, there was mention of a wrestling match outside. And, you know, I, I want you to know, I've said before, I, this is a good old boy system, and I'm not a good old boy. But um, I am not uh, a person that is of the government, for the government, or by the government. I'm for government, for the people, of the people, and by the people. I am committed to the Constitution and the unalienable rights given to us by God our Creator. And those are being taken away from us quickly, out of laws, out of statutes, out of people not willing to stand up and say, it's not happening here. And I can build bridges when necessary, and I can stand up for you when it is required, and I will do that. Um, I'm a, definitely a true Republican. I believe in less taxes, less government, less fees, less restrictions. And I can tell you, unlike my opponent, I'm not going to try to make an appeal process better over land use. How about removing some of those restrictions where we don't need an appeal process? We need a government that frees us up. We can't tax, fee, or fine ourselves to prosperity. That's only come through, through freedom without all that burdensome government over the top of our heads. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And yet when we elect the same government people over and over again, and we think things will improve, it's not going to happen. It's time for a change, and I am that change. And I will, I will represent you with constitutional foundations, common sense leadership, and conservative values. And I ask you for your vote for county commissioner to be an honor to represent you for the next four years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I really thank you for your attention tonight. You've been an excellent audience. And, and I want to make a couple of observations. I see a lot of notepads here. And uh, I know you're not all reporters. I know there's one down there, and I know she's better be taking notes. Uh, but I, uh, I, I hope that what you're going to do is that you have taken notes on, on these candidates and these issues, and that you're going to go back and share these with, with other folks. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, to make mention of is uh, nobody in the front row nudged Mr. Mansfield when he was sleeping, yeah. and he sh they should have, because his eyes were closed an awful lot of the time. I'm sorry, but I was thinking. You're not used to that, Ralph. We, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you very much for your attentiveness and uh, for your, uh, your uh, being uh, considerate of others around you. Uh, you're a great audience, and I thank you for your turnout tonight. I want to thank all the candidates, all the folks that have come out here tonight. Um, they have obviously taken time out of their busy schedule, and I know they're, I know they're busy at this time because they're doing this probably every night. I, I'm assuming that you probably are. Uh, if, you have, if you'd like to stick around a little bit, uh, we can get these folks off the podium if you'd like to ask them a few questions and, and uh, meet them. Uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. So thank you very much. <laughs>